Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. Tonight I continue this series of grandparents telling stories of the past. I always loved listening to stories growing up, as I'm sure you did. And so, through this series, we get a little nostalgic and listen to stories of the past. Tonight's story is a story of love and adventure, of simplicity, beauty, and growth. I really hope you like it. And just one small thing, I'd like to thank those of you who support my work on Patreon. And if you'd like to become a patron, you can find the link below this video. Okay, let's do the relaxation session now, which will take a few minutes before tonight's sleep story. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. And as I do, allow yourself to let go more and more. 10. Feel the support of the bed beneath you, or the floor, and beneath that, the earth, the support of the earth, our home, our constant support. And as you feel that support, allow a gentle easing to take place, a gentle letting go. Really feel that you are supported in this moment. Let go a little more. Nine. Feel into your body now. Notice where you are still holding. Maybe in your feet. Maybe in your hands. Maybe in your belly. Maybe in your face. And again, just allowing everything to let go now. There is no reason to hold on. Your body has worked hard for you today. It's time to allow it to have the rest that it deserves. Eight. You are safe. Allow my voice to be an anchor of safety tonight. To be a friend that will only ever take you to safe places. Allow that fact to enable you to let go a little more now. Seven. The day is done. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. So whatever thoughts might be arriving tonight, perhaps about the past, perhaps about the future, 
don't fight them, but don't follow them either. They are a symptom of being a human, so allow them to arrive. See them for what they are, and then simply watch them float away. Like leaves on a moonlit river, or clouds passing by through a starlit sky. Six. Peace lives within you. It is always there. It is always waiting to be seen, to be felt. So tonight, see if you can find that peace, that peace that you so richly deserve. Five. You deserve rest. We all do. This is your time. Your time to let go. Your time to Enter into another world, a world of sleep, a world of peace. You deserve this moment. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy the fact that you can listen to my voice as you move closer and closer towards sleep. Four. Perhaps allow yourself to feel a little gratitude now. Gratitude for the ability to go to sleep tonight. Gratitude for the simple things. The shelter you have. Your mind and body. The ones you love or have loved and the ones that love you or have loved you. Three, begin to engage with your imagination now. Begin to see a cozy bedroom in New York City and also be ready to walk through Tuscan fields in the beautiful country of Italy and to visit a simpler time and to hear a story of love and adventure. Two, checking in with your body one more time now. Making sure you're not holding on anywhere, finding the release, one, completely letting go now, as I tell you, tonight's sleep story. In a cozy bedroom, 
bathed in the gentle glow of an evening lamp. Grandfather settles into his favorite armchair. He sits next to the beds of three of his granddaughters, Scarlet, Mila, and Stella, and is also joined by two of his grandsons, Luca and Marius. He is surrounded by little children, looking forward to hearing tonight's bedtime story, for this is a moment they cherish with their grandfather. It isn't always that he's visiting, but when he does, he loves to share tales of his past with them and how he came to be in the great city of New York. Outside, the New York skyline is a jagged silhouette against the twilight sky. And inside, the apartment is a warm haven. Children, grandfather begins, his voice tinged with the melodious accent of his Italian heritage. Tonight, I want to tell you a story about my first days in America right here in New York. But before that, we have to go back in time a little. The children look at him, wide-eyed, looking forward to hearing what it was like in their grandfather's youth. When I was a young boy, in the late 1950s, I lived in a little village in a place called Tuscany in Italy. Now I was surrounded by the beauty of rolling hills and ancient vineyards. Life there was tranquil the days were marked by the rhythms of nature, and the church bell each evening. We had this beautiful community. It was close-knit. Every face was familiar. Every smile, a story of shared history. But from a young age, from maybe when I was your age, Marius, I had this dream of going to a distant place, a place filled with mystery and promise, a place they called America. I'd heard stories from sailors and the occasional traveler passing through. And in my head, I pieced together images of sprawling cities, soaring buildings, and streets teeming with people from all walks of life. And at night, I would lie in my small bed under the eaves of our cottage. The gentle sounds of my family slumber around me. Yes, we all slept in the same rooms in those days. And I would dream of those distant shores. My heart swelled with a yearning to see the world beyond, to experience the vastness and the vibrancy of America. 
but I had no one to accompany me. My friends and family were content with their lives in our village. They cherished the familiar, the comfort of home, and the predictable cycles of the seasons. But I was still dreaming, night after night, I would drift into sleep with visions of America. But time passed. I was turning into a young man. And uh, some part of me let go of the dream. And that dream was replaced by deepening appreciation for the life I had in the little village. I began to find real contentment in the daily rituals and the seasoned cycles that shaped our lives. I would spend mornings tending to the vineyards under the soft dawn light, the grapes ripening under the sun's gentle caress. You might not have heard of meditation, but this was my meditation. I learned the art of winemaking from my father, whose skilled hands turned simple grapes into fine wine that seemed to capture something deep about our land. In the afternoons, I spent them in the piazza. I would play chess with the older men who told tales of their youth with a nostalgic affection. Their stories rooted me deeper into our community. I grew to love the way the setting sun bathed the old stone buildings in golden colors. I grew to love the simplicity of the laughter of children echoing through the streets as they played without a care in the world. And evenings were for gathering with family and friends, sharing meals laden with the bounty of our gardens, olives, tomatoes and peppers, all bursting with flavors made richer by the loving hands that tended them. We would sit under the stars, our conversations flowing and also so comfortable in the silence that we often shared. In those years, I built a life that was simple and satisfying. Each season brought its own joys and challenges, but the beauty of my home, the rolling hills, the vibrant markets, the close-knit fabric of community life filled me with a sense of belonging. My dreams of America, which were once so vivid and urgent, became kind of like old photographs in an album 
cherished, but no longer a call to action. I was now rooted in the rhythms of my village. My hands, once restless, with the desire to touch foreign shores, were now skilled in crafting the treasures of our land. Wine, bread, olive oil, the work was hard, but it was mine. I came to treasure the quiet solitude of the early mornings, walking through the fields, shrouded in mist. These moments were a time for reflection and communion with the nature around me. I forged a deep peace within myself, a steadiness that came from understanding my place in the world. Basically, I got to know myself, and I built a foundation, a strong foundation for a human being to go through life, which is something I want for all of you guys. Anyway, a little bit of time passed, and a new resident arrived in the village, the niece of my old friend Paolo, she had come from the south of Italy. <laughs> she brought with her the warmth of the Mediterranean sun. Her smile was bright and lingering. And though our paths crossed often, neither of us spoke to each other. Initially, it was funny, really. I would see her sometimes, out in the fields, wandering along the edges, where wild flowers dared to grow against the grain. She moved with a lightness, as if her feet barely touched the earth her fingers trailing through the tall grasses that bowed at her gentle touch. I would be working, doing what I did, and I would see her, and I would pretend to be focusing on my vines Yet all the while, I have to admit, I was drawn to her effortless grace. I would see her everywhere, at the river, in the piazza, at the church, sometimes in the cooler evenings. I spotted her silhouette against the fading light at the old stone bridge. She would watch the sunset, and I would pass by, perhaps a nod or a small smile exchanged, and still, we never spoke. Then, one beautiful afternoon, at the bridge again, I was leaning against the cool stone, watching the water flow beneath, when she approached. She paused beside me, 
She looked out over the river, then turned to me with a smile. And finally, the silence was broken. E bellissimo, non è vero, she said. Yes, it is beautiful, I replied, feeling the words awkward, yet exhilarating. It reminds me how much beauty there is, wherever we are, I said. We spoke then of simple things first. The river, the coming harvest, the way the evening light lingered on the hills. And as the words flowed, so did our ease with each other, and a friendship began to blossom. It felt natural. It felt authentic. One day, as we sat beneath the shade of an old olive tree, watching the sunlight dapple through the leaves, she shared her dreams with me. I've always wanted to see New York she confided. The buildings, the art, the different lives lived there. It seems like another world. Her words stirred something deep within me, rekindling the embers of a dream I had long set aside the idea of New York, which had once filled my nights with wonder, surged back with newfound intensity as I listened to her speak of her desires. I realized that my dreams had not vanished. They'd merely been waiting. Perhaps for this moment. For someone to share the journey with. A little bit of excitement bubbled within me. A mixture of my old dreams. And the new joy of having Isabella by my side. Maybe we could go together, I suggested, the words tentative but hopeful. Her face lit up with a smile, a silent yes. From that day, our plans began to take shape. The dream of New York was no longer just a fantasy. It was a destination. A shared goal that we approached with enthusiasm and careful preparation. It was going to be the start of a new chapter. New adventures, and the fulfillment of long-held dreams. The decision was made, and the weeks that followed were a blur of preparation and anticipation. Together, her and I gathered what savings we had sold some of our belongings and eventually came the day 
where we said our heartfelt goodbyes to the beautiful little village that had been our world, our universe, this tight-knit community with faces as familiar as our own reflections, offered blessings and well wishes, their emotions mingling with ours, pride, excitement, and the ache of a farewell. The journey to New York began one crisp autumn morning. We boarded a train, and as we sat on the train, we smiled at each other. You know, at that point, we weren't even really a couple. We knew we loved each other. I think we both knew we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. But as far as the village was concerned, we were going away as friends. Unusual for the time. But they knew what we were like. And I think they knew, all of them deep down, that we were destined for each other. But all in our own time. I'd never been on a train before. So every step of this adventure was so exciting. I watched the beautiful land of Italy pass by through the window. And I felt something I'd never felt before. An opening up. stomach in a good way and a kind of vibration with the person sitting opposite me because we both felt it and it was magical in fact as I look back on that moment on the train It's still one of the greatest moments of my life. Like the doors opened to a new world. And that train was the first footstep I took into that world. Eventually, we arrived at the port of Genoa from where a great ship would carry us across the Atlantic. It was a big vessel. And as we stepped aboard, another door opened. My first time on a ship. I'd heard stories of ships but I'd never even seen one up close. This was a different time when people didn't move much from where they lived. I had spent nearly every day of my young life in that little village. Now I was seeing what human ingenuity could achieve up close. There was so much to take in. 
We didn't have screens back then. There was one television in our village. Sure, I'd seen black and white images of things, but I never really paid much attention. I was more interested in being outside. But when I saw this boat, I couldn't believe it. We had paid extra to have our own little cabin with two separate beds. We had to pretend we were married to get it, which was difficult, but we managed. The ship was another universe. We were going to spend at least a week on this boat. I remember some beautiful moments. One clear night aboard the ship, far from the light pollution of the cities. The sky was breathtaking. We sat on the deck chairs, gazing upwards. The vastness of the ocean magnified the brilliance of the stars above. It was a really calm night. It was like we were breathing in sync. And it felt like we were the only two people on planet Earth. We looked at each other awkwardly at first. But then our eyes fixed on each other. And it was in that moment that we had our first kiss. Myself and Isabella. Oh, I just realized I hadn't told you her name. Isabella. You guys know her as Grandmother. And it was in that moment that your grandmother and I knew that we would never have another first kiss again. We lay back on our deck chairs and looked up at the stars. A shooting star passed over us. We both made a wish, but we didn't tell each other what the wish was. But I think we knew it was for the same thing. Those days on that ship were like nothing I've ever experienced since. It was just us two. We danced in the night, had coffee at sunrise, watching the ocean around us, and we had walks and walks around the deck, talking about our plans talking about our dreams. As land finally came into view, the iconic silhouette of the Statue of Liberty greeting us, a symbol of new beginnings, my heart swelled. Isabella squeezed my hand tightly. We were arriving in New York. The city that had loomed so large in our dreams. Now, right in front of us. 
It was literally like being in a dream. Stepping off the ship onto the bustling piers of Manhattan, we were met by sounds and sights like we'd never seen or heard. Skyscrapers soared into the sky. Every street hummed with activity. Every face we passed told a story. And we had each other. And that was all that mattered. And we felt safe. We fell in love with the place pretty quickly. The rhythm of our days became a blend of hard work and exploration. We loved exploring the city, getting to know it, feeling like we were becoming a part of it and it a part of us, a part of our story. One chilly evening in December, I decided that it was time to take a step. Something that had been on my mind since our days back in Tuscany. I planned a special outing for Isabella. One that would take us to one of New York's most iconic sites, the Empire State Building. And as we rode the elevator up to the observation deck, I was nervous about what I was about to do, but very excited. It was evening time, and the city lay below us like a vast, twinkling ocean of lights as we stepped onto the observation deck. I led Isabella to a quiet spot where the sounds of the streets seemed to hush enough for privacy. I took her hands in mine. Isabella, I began. From the moment I met you, you've filled my life with joy and wonder. I have felt a need to care for you. Like your family from the second I saw you. And I know you feel that way about me. I can't imagine a future without you. I pulled a small box from my pocket. Opening it to reveal a ring that sparkled. Even in the dim light. Will you marry me? Her eyes were wide with surprise and glistening with unshed tears. Yes, she whispered. The city around us seemed to celebrate with us its endless energy, now a part of our story. Of your story. The grandfather paused. He smiled warmly at his grandchildren, who had been listening intently to his tale. And that, my little ones, is how you are all here today, 
because of that moment when I proposed to your grandmother atop the Empire State Building. As the tale came to an end, the room was filled with a warm, contented silence. The girl's eyes were heavy, and the two boys were equally tired. They sleepily wandered off to their room. Buonanotte, grandfather said to each of his grandchildren. They each said their good nights, and grandfather walked down the hall to his own bedroom, where Isabella was already waiting, a book in her hand but her eyes on the door for him. As he entered, she set the book aside and smiled. The same radiant smile that had captured his heart all of those years ago in that little Italian village. They exchanged a quiet, affectionate good night, each one so content as they reflected on the beautiful life that they had built together. And it all started with two dreamers finding each other. A very long time ago.